कश्मीर फाइल्स अपनी जान पे खेल के सब्सक्राइब करना तो बनता है The Kashmir Files is a movie based on one of the most gruesome and less spoken about chapter of India's modern history. The forced exodus of Kashmiri pundits in the early 1990s. First of all, let me just say that it's so heartening and refreshing to see the Indian film industry, especially Bollywood, moving away from the typical escapist, uh, you know, romantic comedies or high-budget Bollywood action dramas, masala films, which which they produced again and again for a long time. You have to you have to credit filmmakers of today who are picking topics. which were considered untouchable topics even 10 years ago while some of these movies turn out to be good some don't but the point is that it's a move in the right direction coming back to the kashmir files the movie is really a journey about our protagonist uh, krishna pandey who's coming to kashmir after 32 years of the incident he is there to fulfill his grandfather's last wish of scattering his ashes krishna is very naive and uninformed he is shown to be the confused youth who is caught between two narratives us versus them left versus right truth was is false while in kashmir krishna meets pushkar's friends one is an is officer the other a media person one a retired police officer and the other one is a doctor through these men krishna and we the audience slowly uncover the layers my favorite line from the movie is when mithun's character says that you cannot discuss kashmir without discussing politics and that's true so i'm not going to discuss politics kashmir or religion in this review what i will talk about though is the movie what i liked what i didn't like what are its merits and what are its demerits simple the very first scene of the movie is a cricket commentary that is playing on radio of a match between india and pakistan in early 1990 sachin is facing imran khan the separatist are supporting pakistan and the kids that are playing there are supporting india it's a brilliant setup showing the great divide between the people there as well as readying us for the violence that is going to come later in the film the only problem though is that it's a fake match Being the cricket nut that I am, I went and I searched and I searched the whole of internet to find a cricket match between India and Pakistan in January 1990. I kept searching and searching the internet, but I could not find that match. The fact is that India's tour of Pakistan ended in December 1989. Now you can say that I'm nitpicking, and you won't be wrong. I understand that this is done for creating a dramatic effect, but why I bring up this is because this is the problem with film. Right from the first scene till the last, it is ready to sacrifice authenticity and truth to create a dramatic effect. It happens again and again throughout the movie. Now, in this movie's defense, I have to say that there are several movies which are based on real life that tend to get the facts completely wrong. But when your movie is talking about a tragedy like this, and on a topic where there are very less reference points, then it feels irresponsible and it bothers you as an audience. but once you start realizing it and giving to the fact that this movie is not trying to be authentic or realistic it is merely telling a story of this individual's emotional journey in a highly dramatized form it starts working the dark tone throughout the movie is different from how kashmir has always been shown in other movies the use of kashmiri language is a really nice touch the use of the beautiful kashmiri songs especially in that pre interval scene when all these people are dumped into a truck and taken to safety the scene is bone chilling and the music is haunting it's the best scene of the film but just when you start internalizing the drama and empathizing with the characters the glaring inconsistencies in the screenplay start showing up it's just too hard to ignore and the real culprit here is vivek agnihotri his lack of skill and limitations as a director starts really showing especially after the interval now now take this example throughout the movie almost every character in the film says that this tragedy has not been covered by the newspapers has not been reported by media it in fact blames the media for hiding the truth but in the end it is through these newspaper clippings that mithun chakravarti collects over the years and the interviews that happen on tv that our protagonist krishna pandit finally realizes the truth तो विच इज इट कवर किया था या नहीं किया था सेकेंडली थ्रू आउट द मूवी यू सी दैट पल्लवी जोशी कैरेक्टर इज वेरी स्मार्ट वेरी एस्ट्यूट वेरी इंटेलिजेंट देन वाई शी आस्किंग एन ऑलमोस्ट फोर्टी इयर ओल्ड इन डिसाइसिव एब्सोलूटली कंफ्यूज पर्सन टू रन फॉर द इलेक्शन ऑफ अ कॉलेज प्रेसिडेंट that to according to her a very important election does not sound like a smart move at all 
Sounds like something a dumb person would do. Also, who's this guy competing against in the election? Who's on the other side? Think about it. If Pallavi Joshi and her gangs are the Fez poem reciting leftist, pro-separatist group, so then the people against them would be the right-wing pro-Kashmiri Pandit guys. In fact, for Krishna Pandit, that seems to be the right fit. So why aren't they even there in the film? You could have shown him interact with that person, you know, after he comes back from Kashmir or even before he goes to Kashmir. It would have been a nice dynamic to explore. But it seems the movie is not interested in any of those. There are such gross uh, inconsistencies, omissions and silliness that should not have been there in a movie that is talking about a very serious topic like this. As I said, it's just lazy, limited filmmaking. Now, director Vivek Ranjan Agnigotri has two sides of him. As a filmmaker, he has made movies like Chocolate, Dan Dana Dan Gol, Hate Story and Zid. Mostly low budget B grade films until the Tashkin Files, which was a sleeper hit and after which people started taking him more seriously. Unlike the other directors that you might have seen me talk about in this channel, there is no real style or a tone that Vivek Agnigotri has that uh, we can talk about. But as a personality, it's a different ball game. As a personality, he is flamboyant, controversial and whatnot. He has a knack of always being there in the news. Sometimes because of his Twitter handle and the provocative statements that he makes there and many times because of the unintentionally funny interviews that he's given in the recent times. Facts are facts, no? No, why? Who said facts are facts? But, but, but I think with Kashmir Files, Vivek has found his style, he's found his tone and he should stick to it. But there's a long, long way to go for that. I hope he keeps getting better and better with every movie. The Kashmir Files is, is a good attempt, uh, but falls way below any quality cinema standards. As of now, I have to regrettably say that the Kashmiri Pandit story still doesn't have the movie that it deserves. I hope the success of this film really encourages other filmmakers to look at this particular story in a far more deeper level. So, as I said in the beginning, you have to credit the filmmaker for choosing a brave topic. But other than that, frankly, this movie feels like an opportunistic endeavor uh, by the filmmaker to really feed off this tragedy, which is really sad. Because the whole point of a movie is to start a debate. And the debate that this movie is starting is very dangerous. So all in all on the bench meter, the Kashmir Files is at best an average attempt. It could have been a lot better in the hands of a more capable filmmaker. You can watch Kashmir Files in a theatre near you and I hope you don't bump into guys like this. Not even any of one Salman Khan 